Hey guys, welcome to the Mazda CX-30. All new car this year for 2020 from Mazda. Very excited to drive this thing because it kind of hits a nice little sweet spot between the Mazda CX-3 and the CX-5. The CX-5 is a little bit large for your needs and the CX-3 is a little tight and cramped. This is your Goldilocks just right in the middle. And uh, that's kind of how I feel about this. It's very nice, it adapts some of Mazda's new design language into their interior. This infotainment is fantastic. You can control it with the scroll wheel and uh, it's very easy to use, very intuitive. You have kind of a minimalist dashboard layout and design. Everything is really nicely kind of built into the, the design of the vehicle. The climate controls are very easy to access and use. You have these beautiful straight vents Ah, it's very modern, almost kind of a little bit mid-century in here. Very cool and neat looking car and uh, very premium materials, fit, finish, feel. Um, and for the price, you can get into one of these from anywhere between 22 to 30 grand. It's a pretty compelling package. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, we've got heated seats little reverse camera there. This is powered by Mazda's 2.5 liter naturally aspirated sky active motor. This is an all wheel drive premium. It has 186 horsepower, 186 pound feet of torque. You get about seven inches of ground clearance in this CX-30, which should be more than enough for most people's use. Back seat is actually reasonably spacious. You even get a little bit of a bump up here above the passenger's heads for just a little bit of extra headroom. Mazda's new flat key. It's a little bit lightweight and flimsy feeling. Uh, I wish that it were had a little bit more heft to it. This premium model has the power lift gate, compact spare tire, Bose subwoofer back here too, which is a pretty, pretty hefty unit. get quite a good amount of cargo space in this CX-30. A lot of height here. You can easily fold down the seats with the press of a button. Those do fold flat, but my driver's seats aren't put forward enough. It's not hugely spacious back here, but there's definitely enough room for adults. One thing I will say, the driving and seating positions in the CX-30 are fantastic. Mazda did a lot of work to make sure that you still retain good posture while you're seated in, the, in this car, and uh, that's the case in the front and the back. It's very comfortable. The seats have just the right amount of plushness. This leather feels very premium. It's easy to get in and out of. You don't hit that C pillar with your head. Great packaging in this CX-30 overall. Wipers, radar guided cruise control, lots of
some new safety systems. You'll notice that before you take off, the handbrake is engaged. You can either disengage it manually, which is a pain, or just tap the accelerator. And if you have your seatbelt on, you'll set right off. Finally, it's nice to drive a smaller crossover without a CVT. This has Mazda's six-speed torque converter automatic. It shifts and drives great. There's, there's the occasional rough start, rough shift here and there, but for the most part, it's tuned pretty well and uh, has great response, holds revs nicely, and uh, puts the power down in the CX-30 quite well. Ride quality in this is great. The suspension is really nicely damped for uh, good handling and over bumps. It's not punishing. It's very supple, very comfortable. I would probably swing for a smaller wheel and tire package though. These 18s are a little bit large, I think, for this car, but that's what you get with this package. We also have the Bose audio system in the CX-30 and it's fantastic. It's one of the best sound systems I've heard from Mazda. We'll do a sound test in a POV night drive later this week, so stay tuned for that. We'll go through our various array of soundtracks and go from there. So let's talk about handling. The CX-30 has Mazda's G vectoring control which does a little bit to kind of keep you on the straight and narrow, reduce understeer. It works a little bit with the all-wheel drive system to kind of keep you pointed in the direction you want to go. One interesting thing I learned about this car this week is there's no traction control off button, but the traction control is tuned in a way that it's very unintrusive. And uh, Mazda's kind of made a decision to leave traction control buttons out of their crossovers but be able to turn traction control off in their cars and sports cars like the Miata. And you know, that's that's just kind of a, whether it's a, a practicality decision, uh, you know, a decision based on the target demographic of these cars, or just a legal situation with the higher roll center, higher center gravity of crossovers. I will say that this works great. Driving in the wet, driving in the rain in reduced grip scenarios today, uh, Never once has the traction control kicked in in an aggressive or distracting manner. And uh, that kind of goes to show that the overall driving experience in this car uh, does not have a lot of distracting elements and characteristics to it. I feel very natural and relaxed driving in this CX-30. is pretty adequate. It has a nice level of mechanical grip. Turning radius isn't bad. And the steering has a really nice weight to it and returns to center very nicely. Originally when I got in this CX-30 I thought that these uh, the door height was really quite ridiculous. Um, you know you, you can't really rest your arm up here just because it's so tall. But after living with this car for a few days and just kind of driving it, the seating position is very comfortable. You have armrests on both sides. They're nicely padded. And uh, the driving position is fantastic. And these, these seats are so comfortable that this isn't an issue. It's not an issue for visibility. And um, I don't really think it's an issue for comfort either. It did take a little bit of getting used to though when I first started driving it. But uh, even though there is such a narrow window in this car. You do have pretty good visibility. There aren't a lot of blind spots in this. Let's 
see how it does here from a dig. Getting a little bit of wheel spin from the front tires, but the all-wheel drive system kind of figures it out and sends some power to the rear. And there is an off-road mode that has a little bit more of an aggressive all-wheel drive traction control management. So if you have one wheel slipping, you'll be on kind of a, you know, you've got two wheels up in the air, you're in a little bit of a frame twister, then uh, it will aggressively break the wheels without traction, so that it'll send traction to the other side and uh, give you grip where you need it. Let's throw it into sport mode, do some acceleration testing here. Stability control tuning in this is just phenomenal. Very unintrusive. Reminds me a little bit of the tuning in the new Nissan Sentra. It's kind of how you want it. You don't want any abrupt cuts in power. You want it to adjust to your driving and, and almost be unnoticeable. On the highway, there's very little wind and road noise. This is a very important thing for Mazda, I think, because the last Mazda 3 generation I drove had a, it was pretty loud inside, and there were a lot of customer complaints about that. Uh, this is a whole new step for Mazda in terms of interior comfort and uh, NVH levels, which is pretty awesome. The ergonomics in this are really nice too. Uh, occasionally I'll find myself accidentally pressing a button in instead of up or down, uh, but once I've gotten used to kind of where I need to place my hands and how to use this system, that's not as much of an issue. Um, the cruise control can be a little bit sensitive sometimes when the car in front of you is turning right or merging over and slowing down. Uh, your car will kind of adapt to their speed uh, in an undesirable way, but for the most part on the highway, it works really, really well. You can skip five mile an hour increments in speed. It'll come to a stop quite smoothly. It'll resume speed pretty smoothly. And you can even go into the system settings. So you can just have standard, good old fashioned cruise control without a radar guided system. And it's actually holding us here at a complete stop, which is pretty cool. We'll see what happens once uh, traffic resumes. But I love all the customizability in this CX-30. You can change all of your driving assistance settings, um, really custom tailor this to your preferences, and uh, that's nice. That's very BMW-esque of Mazda, and I appreciate that. So to resume cruise control, we're just going to tap the accelerator and uh, take our turn here. And it gets back up to speed just fine. That's great. Nice system. I haven't touched the gas yet. See how the paddles are to use, just in regular driving mode. They're pretty responsive. I mean, typical Mazda six-speed fashion. This doesn't really feel that much different. I would be curious to see what the front-wheel drive CX-30 drives like. I feel like for people who aren't in snowy climates or gonna be doing any off-road driving, that would probably be the best option. Mazda's front-wheel drive cars like the CX-5, the front-wheel drive version, tends to be a little bit more uh, lively and, and uh, exciting to drive. This feels safe, it feels solid, it feels planted. I wouldn't necessarily say it's fun to drive. It's very nice to drive, though. It's very comfortable, very relaxing. I feel like this is a kind of a luxury hatchback crossover experience, a little bit like the BMW X2 or something like that. Uh, but this doesn't have as many interior rattles as the BMW X2 in my experience and uh, offers much better value. So 
that's kind of where I categorize this. You know, it, it is priced similarly to a lot of entry-level competition, but it feels like a pretty high-end car, and uh, I think that's pretty exciting seeing that come from Mazda. All right, Savage Keys, get out of the way here. There we go. We're coming through. Yeah, this thing is great. I I would buy one of these, honestly. I think this CX-30 is the right size. It has the right balance of driving involvement without the distraction from the infotainment and the ergonomics and the controls. And it's a very, very beautiful interior. I think this is one of my favorite interiors of 2020. This is just, I think it's gorgeous. There's a little brown um, touch to the top of the dashboard here. The leather feels really nice. The seats have kind of a little red hue on the inside of the holes. Um, this dashboard, this top is kind of tacky, so I'm curious to see how dusty that'll get over time and how it'll age. But um, otherwise, you don't have a lot of shiny black except for on the sides here. Uh, but if you're careful, that shouldn't get too bad. It does have some texturized carbon fiber-like patterns in there. There's a nice place to put your phone right here that's grippy, so it's not going to slide around. You have another USB port in here and a car cigarette lighter port. A little place to put sunglasses. These extend there. Yeah, so pretty top marks for the CX-30. Um, I think there may be just a little bit more smoothness and driving refinement from the CX-5 and the Mazda 3, but this is very close and it's not bad. Um, this is a great overall effort from Mazda and uh, bodes well for the future of the rest of their lineup, uh, but in my opinion this might be one of the best buys from the company right now, aside from the Miata. Not 100% sold on the looks. This plastic cladding has been a point of contention for some people. I would probably get this in a darker color because of that, either a black or the gray. Um, but I can see how it kind of adds to the off-road look and, and rugged appeal and probably saves a little bit of money on paint. But... Um, yeah, this is just a, it's a neat, neat little crossover. Gets good gas mileage. You can kind of get this pretty well equipped in all trims. I think my favorite option is probably the Bose audio system, which leads us into a segue for our next video. So stay tuned for that. Let me know if you guys have any questions. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.